Shalom Yisrael. Greetings to you all. I'm here at our graveyard because it is where we bury the nation here. Our cemetery it is called Teshua Garden of Grass. And it's one thing that we must understand when I use the terminology Hebrew Israelite, feed yourself. I'm not just talking about the food substance because you can supply that and grow that. You can do a variation of things, all right? So there's another, this episode, I want to show you something different. And I will show you all kinds of aspects of gardening, farming, uh, and those kind of things that will assist you. So come on with the ride. Come on, let's go. You see, this is our cemetery room. We're here for a graveyard where they've been buried. And we need to get this fixed up right. And done. Uh, Show you some of those kinds of things. As well, a matter of fact, we're having a fun day today. We're having a fun day. The children will sit down for a minute. The children are out of school today, and we're gonna have a fun day. We're gonna start about noon, and we're just going to fellowship and eat some wonderful eating and have a great time. It's one thing about the beauty of community. You have so many places we have here. Variations of places you can sit, you can fellowship, you can do different things, you can walk, you have a track field here. We, we can do all of that. And the children fellowship hall, gym for the Achim, the daughters, places they can practice the piano lessons. That's what community is all about. It's sad that among those that you say you're Hebrew Israelites, that there is no forbearing of each other, no love, and certainly no kindness toward each other. You can say what you want to. I've been around for a long time, not a short time. I've preached over 40 years. So I've been around for a while. I've been around for a while. And this is a generation that simply has no idea what love and caring for each other is. So I use the terminology, Hebrew Israelites, feed yourself, la'atz. But uh, I, I like the word ra'a better, but la'at is applicable to this, uh, to these episodes that I will share with you. Because to la'at, it is to eat hungrily and greedily. you just greedy. So you should be greedy for fellowship, greedy for love, greedy for caring for each other, greedy to grow and to assist. Come on, I want to show you this because I need to check on the sheep. My, we're going to look, I want to show you something here. This is, uh, this is our strawberry bed. And uh, as you can see here, these are old ties, railroad ties. Let nobody tell you, if you want to use railroad ties, you can, you can put plastic inside of anything to keep the creosote or anything from seeping into the soil. And these are old, they've been here for 20 years. So these are raised beds here. We built this. This is where we will grow stuff. I will put things out here for the later on in the growing season here and we put down this black mulch it's very important take a look at this you can buy this for we spend 125 dollars a roll but it will do one roll will do basically i think there's about 40 beds here and we got them all ready to go this is some tremendous mulch here we buy it locally to give it some kind of additive uh, for the planting uh, of, uh, of your seeds. Well, let me show you this full bed. All right, I want to show you. Look at how beautiful they are. So we got everything from Juneberry to Everberries, uh, different times of the season they come to make jams for our babies. I did this for my children, my young ones. So we have a nice rich compost in here. And the soil that underneath here is our own soil that we compose so and all of these beds you can see it's nothing but uh, strawberries and all of these beds and uh, what we will do set up the system to water this consistently drip irrigation because it's not as costly you drip for right now we have the sprinklers over here because we have so much to do this is vitally important that you create the kind of wholesomeness to community construct. I find people that have their own land, they want to do this. 
but it belongs to that person. This land doesn't belong to me. People will write, say, what about your land? I own not one stitch of ground here. This is for the people. I set it up that way. I'm not a con man like many of these con persons are. This belongs to Yisra Ya'el. I have it set up where nobody can sell it. If I die today, they can't sell it. The last person living here, they will own it. And the taxes here in South Carolina, they're nothing. So this is important here. The strawberries are beautiful. And look at this. We got beautiful berries in here, strawberries. And also what we have here, you can't see, but I'll show you. This is the drip line. This is the drip line here. You see those? This is, these are irrigators here. And we will put drip line on these and lay them right here in front of each row. And then these are the water sources here. Look at this. This is the water source right here. Come up closer, Akmakos. You see this in here? We have two aeration pumps. You see the bubbles right there? And then you can see the bubbles right here, both in, both of them. That is to present or create the air in the pump for the growth of the fish. And so not only do we raise food, but we raise fish. This is one of our ponds where we can get all, throw a net at him if we want to, we raise fish. And there are fish here and everything. We have a little bit of uh, uh, growth on the top, but we've taken care of that. So that will dissipate here as the heat comes along. So this is important. All these beds, look down the line. All these are strawberries. Down this way, these are strawberries. So I have eight, I have 11 beds left. So I put some of those jumbo heads of garlic out just for next year that I will take them again. They'll become customary to our soil and we'll produce other, uh, other garlic so that we get our own growth of garlic and grow our own garlic, grow our own garlic that we will have sufficient garlic that the bobs will produce and create our own specialty of garlic here. We used to do it, we used to grow everything. I mean everything, but we have slacked off somewhat because we had one time, 135 people living here. Let's go down a little further. I wanna, let, let me show you this here. This is what I'm talking about here. And this we haven't really, this is our greenhouse where I start seeds and things like that. We'll get this together for the fall. But this is the compost we buy here. It is called mushroom compost. That's what it's called. It's all organic. And really in an area like this, it's organic because the farmers, they use turkey litter, chicken litter, cow litter. They use everything, even human litter. Let no one trick you with the human waste. You just can't pile that up. So farmers are using that. You buy orange juice, anything like that. The waste from New York comes south of Florida, pelletized, and they utilize that on their orchards and things like that. And uh, I do have a few seeds started. But you'll see, I have a few, they're not up yet. A few seeds started. But this is a new system, I'll show you this, that I'm putting in. This is for my misting, right here. Let me show you, right here on this system here. You see that, it looks crude, doesn't it? I can start 4,000 plants. And I put these in here and that will water every five minutes, mist it. We're not trying to water, we're trying to put a mist over it and make the plant grow healthy. Let me show you this. This is what we utilize here for growing seeds and starting seeds. These are what we call hydroponic trays. You use them over and over, they cost a little. So you can get 20 trays on this here, 20 trays. This one here is, we got them that you can start 200 plants at a seeds at a time. And these here, I got some that will do 125 or larger things like peppers and things. But we can start 4,000 plants here at one time, one time. So that's how we do it here. Learn to grow, to feed yourselves. You don't know what you're eating in stores. You think you're eating so healthy, but you're really not. 
I'm growing food is not just putting a seed in the ground thinking it's going to grow. You got to nurture it. You got to fertilize. And I'll show you the kind of fertilizers we use, places to purchase. And I'm telling you, it doesn't take much. But for community size that we grow a lot, we got corn coming in. We're going to grow corn. So a tabernacle, we have plenty of fresh corn for, uh, I will make homemade sausages from our beef cows and, and from the roosters that we raised and butchered to make sausage and have one of those big sausage ball with potatoes and, and sausages and corn and everything and just have a great fellowship. It costs you nothing to come here for Tabernacle or any feast days. We're not one that charge a price. Come visit, but come in Shalom. You come any other way, you got to deal with me and I don't, I, I don't even, I don't even pontificate at all because I've dealt with people, I've put them off these grounds. You're not coming here with folly. You're coming here in Shalom, you'll be all right. Come on, let me show another aspect of this. But these are, look at the beautiful strawberries. Look how they're growing. Beautiful, look at that. That's just beautiful. Next year, this time, we'll be eating. I don't want to eat strawberries this year. You, that's why there's a June better than ever berry. Some will bear in June, some will bear in July. They will bear about three times. June berries will bear first, and they're all kinds. And listen, don't ask me questions as to what is the best berry I live in Tennessee? Well, the berry that we grow in Tennessee is not conducive to here. So what any of you all, I don't care what state you're watching from or other parts of the world, you can always go to your agriculture center. It's local in every state. Or there is a university that deals with the agro business of that state, horoculturists and all kinds of experts. You can go to the sites and read and they will tell you the best kinds of plants that will grow better in your area. It's all free and I utilize that. I don't utilize the mechanical mythology of, of, of feeding my plants and our plants, but I do go there for the best corn to grow here and the kinds of corn. They would tell you the best heirlooms or, or the best hybrids and let no one kill you, kid you grow hybrids, grow heirlooms. Heirloom is a seed that will produce, uh, and you can keep the seeds three or four years. Hybrid is a seed that comes for two years at the best, and then it diminishes as it goes. But it's only a, a, a pollination between plants of its kind, or the roots being uh, rooted together to form that plant. People are silly. The ones that know everything are the ones that know nothing. The ones that tell me things have never fallen. They have never gone, but they will tell you things. Let me show you a rich resource. Come on, my friend. A beautiful protein, all right? Let's go, we're gonna go. Okay. I want to show you something here as to uh, what are the proteins that is excellent for you. Nothing like organic eggs, guinea eggs, chicken eggs. And we have a growth of, 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 of different things out here in the fields for the chickens They eat graze. These are totally free range, all right? They range all day long. They get their food. And so we have clover and peas and things like that. And the weeds grow too. This is, this garden here, when I first came here, this was the only garden we had. It produced some of the best foods you wanted to eat. And my ignorance of fertilizing, I didn't know. But this garden did it all. Let's, let's go to the chicken house. See how they blessed us this day. Let's see if they got something for us. These birds here, you see the black ones in here? Those are called Osterup. They lay some of, that is one of the chickens that has, has proven to lay 354 days of a year, even in the winter. They're big birds, they're meaty birds, and they are uh, uh, wonderful to eat as well. This is a buff orpheting here, that speckled one. Two well, let's see what we have here today. We built this old chicken house years ago off straps of old wood. We put things together, all right? It works. We got a place of roost. But let's see. Ah. My, my, my. Tell me what. Ah. Beautiful brown eggs. Ah. Look at that. Eggs everywhere. Eggs everywhere. Eggs. 
eggs. All these boxes have eggs in them. Beautiful eggs, eggs everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful organic. This is not just talk. This is for real. You see that? Feed yourself with something of that beauty. Those eggs you buy in the store, they may have been there six months because an egg will last six months. But look at that. Look at that. Rich fat. You'll be all right. So this is where we, uh, our chickens, you look, there are eggs everywhere. I, the camera may be a little dark in here, not may. We do have lights in here. But there are eggs everywhere on both sides. Look at that, they're laying. Look at all these boxes. And we will get, we will get, we will get probably out of this today, probably 100, 150 eggs, maybe 150. We get that many eggs. Usually it's about 80 to 90 a day but uh, we didn't collect yesterday, so at the end of the day, we'll get close to, I would say close to 200 eggs. Fresh, organic, and beautiful eggs. Go ahead, my friend. Yo, go ahead for a minute, go ahead. We'll get fresh eggs. Hallelujah. All right, the eggs are fresh, water fresh for the chickens. We try to do everything to keep the fox and everything out, but they, they're gonna, you're gonna lose some. On that degree. It's just life. But these are our chickens, fresh eggs, ah. Fresh eggs and everything. All the fresh eggs you want. And it doesn't take that many, it really doesn't. It doesn't take that many. Let me take you. I want to sh check on our herd of sheep. That's the reason why. Come on, my friend. Israelites, feed yourself. Laat. Eat greedy. Eat with such a fervor of greed, consuming Yah's Torah. You see, we have the. We worked on this herd of sheep for a while to breed them all down to one like that. You see that ram over there with the big horns, that brown one? Yes, sir. We want to do them all like that. And so it's been a while. It's been something in progress. And so, wonderful organic land. You see where they're grazing? There's not one drop of chemicals on these grazing. Everything is organic, you know, manure and organic fertilizer. That's what we use. But I'm going to give them a little bit of this corn that we work Look at the beauty of that herd tag. I think we have about 125 sheep. These are pregnant, all of them. So the fall of the year, they'll start producing. We want them all like, you see how beautiful that sheep is right there? No. Wall all like that one. That's how we want them. Like these two. This is a mixture of a Texas sheep. Where's the Texas sheep? Look how they run. All looking like this right here. We'll get there. A few more breedings, we'll get there. And so, yep. He's one of our little bulls, our master rams. He's coming up. Good. 
this is what we'd like to do. And I will recommend, I will show you, we have a small herd, small herd of, uh, of, uh, of goats. She are much better. They're more compatible. Goats, finicky, sick, easy. I'm telling you, we at one time had 300 goats. More goats, mixture milk goats, Nubians. But I find these, you see this big ram right here? I find these to be much more, much more. You know, they, you don't need, goats need a place to go in the rain. They'll stay out in the rain, these don't. But he's a monster, look at him. So he's gonna be the papa. He take, he can take you all of him and the one down there with the white head. It's a beautiful ram. You're gonna look to get cheap, get you a nice, if you have the funds, you live in the area uh, where you can raise them. It's gonna cost you for a nice ram. What I would say cost you, you, you have to invest, you have to take a chance. It'll cost you about $2,000 for decent ram that put fat on the babies and all of that. But a nice ram will cost you. And you can get a decent one for $500 in most places. But these are the sheep here. They're much more in, they're much more uh, durable than goats. Goats are not durable. So we only have about, I believe, around 25 goats, and we I put you one of them for a special occasion. But the sheep, this is the way to go, my friends. Sheep is the way to go. You have a small piece of land, you want to raise some few goats, a little pygmy or something like that, family gathering. But these right here, uh, this. They have done well here. We started off with, I think, eight, nine sheep. And our sheep, I'm used to seeing them kid three at a time. Not any of these would produce one, always two or three. So this is a nice little herd. We can put you one anytime you want to. And we do. Tabernacle, we eat some of this wonderful lamb's meat. Listen, my friends, I, I, we want you to enjoy the videos and see the husbandry. We will see all the husbandry from cows to goats and everything in this community. We will show you uh, how we do things, fellowshipping and all of those kinds of things. You need to listen to me. You need to get in a position or place where you can learn how to love each other. And you all can share with each other. That's a sad. That is the most disgusting thing about, quote, Hebrew Israelites, unquote. The Jews, you call them fake, but they do develop communities. They do have places where they can buy their kosher food and all of that. You ask me, can I buy some vegetables? And you live in New York City. That's, that, that, that's not feasible. Some of these groups together with the monies, the priest dues and all of that, they could buy a thousand acres of land. They could easily spend one million dollars. The one that was just arrested there in New York, look at the kind of money he was spending in the homes. Thirteen thousand dollars a month for leasing? Stop that. Stop that. One million dollars to have a, a Pesach and the finest of hotels, you had a thousand acres of land, you could set up tents. When they went to Yerushalayim, there were no hotels. They had tents, and they didn't try to dress Philly fly with, come on, people, something is wrong. And everybody come down and gather for a Pesach. And everybody, you could raise another million dollars, just that alone. You buy equipment, you buy, you engage in the community. Whether you like the people or not, you learn things that way. You could have your bakery, you could raise your own wheat, your own corn, you could grow enough, raise your own meat. Those fake Jews do it all the time. Those Ashkenazis, they do it, and they're fake. You call them fake. I don't have no problem with them calling them some Jews, because they are Jews. There is no Jew in Torah. No. Jew, there's no doubt, but certainly not a Jew. And so you all, 
You revile each other, you call each other some of the most violent reproach of a name that in words, the white boy has trained you all well. Yes, the white boy has trained you well. I got a teaching called the white mind. I had old white boy, he listened to it, he wrote me, sent me one hundred dollars, he said, preacher, you tell the truth, huh? you tell the truth. It's called the white mind. www.yahwehsword.org And you don't do nothing. You live in the cities. I got something for you on the Shabbat. But look at the herd of cows, of the herd of sheep, beautiful sheep, beautiful. And I love to cook sheep. We got mutton, we got lamb. So this is how you must laat. You must be greedy to do this. You all must get together and sleep. Can I say this to you, my friends? When we began in Charlotte, North Carolina, there were those that were on welfare. I took them all off welfare. Every last one of them. Women that had babies out of wedlock two or three. That's one thing I can say, although they don't live here anymore, 90% of them are still with their husband and wife. I can appreciate that. They had no husband. I got them husbands. You married this one, you married that one. I did. But it's one thing I did. I told them and taught them how to pull the pool their resources, and they moved in with each other. You paying how much rent over the seven hundred dollars? Move in with him. Look, she's gonna stay with you. You got that bedroom? They give her that in the bathroom. That's how you do it. But you, you have learned to be selfish, greedy, uncaring, unkind. You're not gonna do it. You talking about you love Israel? Bull. Shit, I said that way. I know my superlatives of choice. You don't care for Yisrael Ya'ev. You don't love them because you can live next door to a faggot, a homosexual, but you can't live next door to a brother and sister. You can't, you, you all take your resources together. This mine, you gotta give more than you're gonna charge them now. That, we did that. We moved women in with women that were single and you, you, you all share the response. When things got out of hand, they called me and I will always settle things. No, this is what you, no, no, no. This is what you're going to do, period. Brothers with brothers. That's love, man. That's love. Not this bullshit. I call it that. You call love. It is not love. You got your big fine house. Nobody but you and your wife and your son, you got four bedrooms. That's evil. It's sadistic and it's wrong. It's wrong. You need to learn how to la'at, ra'a. Go to the pastures and feed yourself uh, and raise your food uh, and share with each other. No, you can come here. We got a garden full of everything from tronchuda. That's a nice one, tronchuda. Tronchuda, kale, casper, cabbages. I'm not shipping nothing nowhere. Don't try to put that burden on me. But if you're this way, you want to pick some collards, we let you pick some. No cause. But this is what you got to do, Hebrews. Show me your blessings and show me your curse, all right? Ah, uh, the next time. That's enough for today. Next one will be a special one, as all of them should be. Watch this. Tell your friends. Share with others. This is what you need to do. You need to raise food for your babies, for your children. You raise food. You need to be able to fish your own fish. All right, until next time. Yabba Rab. Shalom, my friends.
Ah! 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 Ah!